Hey everybody, I want to tell you about repairing this Stanley battery charger. This battery charger is sold under the brand names of Stanley, Black & Decker, possibly DeWalt. It's made by Bacchus Global, it's an import product. And unfortunately in this video I'm just going to talk, I'm not going to go through the actual repair process because I didn't videotape it, I didn't expect to be successful, but I was pleasantly surprised. But I do have a repair tip for you that might be useful, so hopefully you get some value. Uh, let's talk about this battery charger for just a quick moment. This is a 25 amp smart battery charger, and 25 amps is pretty stout, so it can charge batteries quickly. It also comes in a 15 amp version as well, which is basically identical. I do not recommend this battery charger. Not that it's really a bad product, but I think there are better products for less money. I recently did another video, which is a review of a battery charger off of Amazon for under $30. That is a lot more intelligent than this charger and I think works better. Albeit that battery charger that I did a review of is only 10 amps a charger rather than 25. This battery charger has been less than perfect it uh, will not detect a truly dead battery. If the battery is severely depleted, less than 8 volts, 6 volts, the battery charger will not detect the battery and go into a charge state. So that's a minor inconvenience. Uh, fairly early on in the life of this unit, the uh, fan in it developed a problem where the bearings in the fan made a kind of a chattering noisy sound and sometimes the fan wouldn't come up and when that happens I give this unit a little shake and then the fan works. A little quality control issue there. And also this unit claims to be 25 amps, which it is, but it doesn't do it in a 100% duty cycle, or at least mine doesn't. It will push 25 amps into a severely depleted battery for a while like maybe 20-30 minutes and then the battery charger stops and takes a rest for a few minutes and then after a few minutes it wakes back up and continues the charging cycle and so because of that less than 100% duty cycle this charger doesn't charge a battery as fast as one might presume a 25 amp charger would do but it does get the job done um, it's a smart charger so it automatically stops once the battery is fully charged, but it's not a really smart charger like the other one I recently reviewed that goes through multiple different charging stages and really does a good job of topping off the battery. But for typical battery charger use, this thing works fine. Or it used to work fine. But it had a problem, and that is I left this outside for a couple days on the tractor. And I believe the unit got wet. Now, I don't think it got rained on, but just the morning dew. And after a couple days, I went to go check on it. And it was sitting there saying that it was in float charge mode. It had completed its charging cycle, as I would expect. And I went to push the charge button to have it go through one more charge cycle. And I expected it would go into charge mode. And then, in just a few moments later, tell me the battery is fully charged and all would be well but it didn't respond to my input. I thought, hmm, that's strange. And so I disconnected this off the tractor and I put it onto another battery. And as soon as I connected it to another battery, it started charging, which is a little unusual because typically what would happen is you would attach this to the battery. It would display the battery voltage on the display, but it would not do anything until you push the charge button. And once it kicked off and started charging, I noticed that the other buttons, like voltage check button and such, they, they just weren't working, or they weren't working right. It was just all wonky. Yeah. And so I figured that, well, we probably got a little bit of moisture into these buttons, and so that's making things act weird. So I put this in front of the wood stove to heat it up and dry things out and it worked a little better but not much better and at that point I thought bad charger this is to go but um, I started looking into it a little bit and I figured I think the switches just have an issue because the unit 
can charge. So that means the power supply is working, the regulations working, all of that stuff is good. The display was displaying properly, so that part's good. It just wasn't responding to my switch commands. And so that could be bad switches or some of the logic behind these switches had a problem. Well, I got the unit taken apart, which was a bit of an adventure, and was able to peel this front panel off of the unit. And the front panel has a circuit board, which uh, contains this display and these switches, and they're little clicky switches on the circuit board, which these plastic buttons attach to. And that's got a short cable that goes to the main board in here, which is the power supply. So I was able to disconnect that cable and take the front panel off. And then you can remove a few screws and remove the circuit board from this plastic front panel. On the circuit board, there is a little tiny custom chip blob right behind the LCD display. And then there are the switches on the board for these buttons. And that's about it, a capacitor or two. And it's very simple. It's basically just a circuit chip with these switches. And I figured that in my experience, generally speaking, those circuit chips, a chip will either work or it won't. It's a little unusual that the chip kind of halfway functions. So the problem is most likely those little push button switches. So I sprayed some contact cleaner into all of them and tried to exercise the switches, put the unit back together, and it didn't work. Still same issue. Well, at this point, I ordered another battery charger, and uh, I'm a happy guy, but I would like to get this thing working. So the proper solution would probably be to source and replace the little push-button switches that are on the board, but I don't have any of those in, on hand. And since I figured I didn't have much to lose, and I didn't really have a lot of hope for success, so I didn't video it for you, but I thought... Let's just drop that board into the ultrasonic cleaner and give it a real good shake. That way, if there's any debris or corrosion or issues inside of those little tiny switches, then maybe the ultrasonic cleaner can shake that stuff out, clean up the switches, even though I can't get to them mechanically in any way. And so I dropped the board, which is the size of this whole front panel, into the ultrasonic cleaner. And what I did, I put it in one side with the water level just high enough to cover these switches without getting into the LCD display. I figured getting the LCD display wet and blasting with ultrasonics, probably not a good idea. So I dipped this into the ultrasonic cleaner with just pure water, no detergent or no other chemicals in it, and gave that a zap for about 10 minutes. I flipped the board over and did this side just up to the switch, not beyond, for about 10 minutes. Took the board out, put it in front of the wood stove to let that get all completely nice and dry. Reassembled the unit and it's working perfectly once again. So a quick tip for you is that You can use an ultrasonic cleaner to clean out switches that you can't disassemble or get into. And I think it's a thing of last resort, desperation. That might damage things, but it also might fix things. And in this case, fortunately for me, it, it fixed this device. Um, recommendation is use very clean water. You don't want to use water that has any mineral deposits in it. So I use reverse osmosis water, which is, or just, you could use distilled water, which doesn't have any deposits because you don't want to leave any residue behind from the cleaning process. And just make sure that it's 100% completely and totally dry before reassembling your equipment and re-energizing it. And hopefully if you do that, you'll have the same level of success as I just had with this unit. So... If you're interested in this unit, I'll put a link down below. Um, like I say, I think it works okay, but I think that there are better values in the marketplace. And so I'll put a link to a, another battery charger that I use that I think is even better than this one. But hooray, it lives once again. 
And a tip for you that if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, it's a fantastic tool. I use it for lots of different things. And surprisingly to me, I was able to clean up and repair the switches on this board with the ultrasonic cleaner. And that was a easy, simple fix, uh, with the exception of getting the unit physically apart and back together. No soldering required on this one, folks. So I hope that that uh, is useful to you. And if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner and you're a do-it-yourselfer kind of person who uh, works on lots of variety of things, uh, both for the automotive and the home, I think it's a fantastic tool. And I certainly enjoy mine. I'll give you a link to that as well down below. So thanks for watching the video. An extra big thanks to those of you who have chosen to subscribe to the channel. If you um, find these tips to be of value to you, I'd appreciate it if you'd throw down a thumbs up. And if you have an ultrasonic cleaner and you love yours as much as I love mine, or maybe if you hate yours, uh, let us know about it. Throw a comment down below and tell us your experience. So thanks for watching the video. See you again on the next one.